Well, hello everybody. This is the one video that I was the most excited about and the most nervous about, but I am so excited to show you how to make these beautiful sugar cookies. So stay with me and I'm gonna show you exactly how I make them. So for this recipe, we need butter, powdered sugar, one egg, almond extract, vanilla extract, salt, and flour. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything set up and I'll show you how these are made. So I went ahead and measured everything out and we're all ready to go. I can show you how to make this cookie. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the paddle attachment on. That's what we need for this. So I'm gonna first start by creaming the butter. So my butter is softened and we want to get this till it's light and fluffy. Start with this. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on a higher speed. Okay, so while that is working, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dry, mix our dry ingredients together. So basically all that is, is one teaspoon of salt, and I'm using the pink Himalayan salt, and two and a half cups of flour, all-purpose flour. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this mixed up well. Now this recipe is very, very different than any of the other cookie recipes, whoops, that you've seen us made, make already. Um, this one does not have any you know, granulated sugar or any brown sugar. We're actually gonna use powdered sugar. And that is because this cookie, I'm gonna turn you guys back around to the mixer. There you go. This recipe is specifically designed for when the cookies bake that they're not gonna spread. Unfortunately, to make these gorgeous cookies, um, you need to use a dough like that. It would be, I mean, it'd be great if we could just get, you know, one of those tubes of sugar cookies at the, at the grocery store in the dairy section, but it just won't work. They're gonna spread. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off, scrape everything down again. It's still a little stiff for my liking, so we're gonna go ahead and keep going with this for a minute. And I'm actually gonna bring you back when this is done. This may take a couple minutes. So it's probably not as softened as I'd hoped it to be to begin with. So I'll bring you back when it's all ready. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, it's been going for a couple more minutes and it looks so much better. So now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna add the powdered sugar. And I don't want to do this while the mixer's going because you will have a <laughs> powdered sugar cloud in your kitchen. So I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of this butter off, off the beater. Put that down in there. And in goes one cup of powdered sugar, confectioner sugar, 10x sugar. I'm going to turn this on low to begin with, stir, and then make sure we don't get a big puff. Okay, it's looking good. Okay, I'm going to let this go a couple more seconds. I'm going to scrape it down so all the powdered sugar is incorporated. Beater off. You don't have to worry about over mixing at this point. Okay, let's go ahead and give it another couple minutes. Okay, that's looking good. Can you all see down in there? 
Okay, great. So now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna go ahead and add one beaten egg. Remember everything room temperature, because you want it to blend easily. And I'm adding one teaspoon, let's see, let's see this is one teaspoon of vanilla and one and a half teaspoons of almond extract, they're both extracts. Um, I decided to change it a little bit because my mom loves almond. <laughs> I realized in my cookies for Christmas this year, uh, nothing had almond in it, so I changed that up for her. If you don't have almond, it's okay, just use pure, you know, just use all vanilla extract. So, like I said, one teaspoon of vanilla, one and a half teaspoons of almond extracts, or if you don't have them, just use vanilla. Okay, we want this to mix so it's all well incorporated. I am going to stop it now and scrape down, scrape everything down. Oh, the almond, you can smell it. It smells so good. So excited to make these cookies for you guys. They're so impressive and they're so easy. Where do you see them? I should say, where do you see how we do it? Okay. Back together. I'm gonna turn it up one notch to level two. All right, this is going to take a couple minutes to come together. So as soon as that's done, I'm going to bring you back and show you what it looks like. So the mixer's been going for about maybe four or five minutes. And I'm going to go ahead now. The last thing we need to do, first of all, I'm going to scrape off again. See how much better it looks? Oh, yeah, it's all nice and fluffy. My butter probably needed to be softened a little bit more. Seemed a little bit stiff. Okay, get all, everything off the bottom. Everything well incorporated, looks great. Okay, so now, next what we're going to do is slowly add in the dry ingredients. So I'm gonna put it on stir. And just slowly and carefully add this in. Just give it a minute and let it incorporate and add some more. Addition. I'm gonna let that go for just a few seconds. Good scrape. I do see some dry bits in the bottom, so we want to make sure those are all added in. This is going to be a stiff dough. It's so much fun to work with. What do you see? Whoops. 
jumped overboard. I can really smell the almond, which will make my mama very happy. Okay, I give it a couple more seconds. coming together. Looks great. Okay. I think we have it. So now what I'm going to do, bring you guys on over here. I'm going to take the dough and I'm going to put it in a gallon Ziploc bag. Now, sometimes you'll see people will, you know, take it out and form it into a disc and everything and, and, um, that's great, that works too. I just think this is easier. So I'm gonna go ahead. Whoops, sorry. Got to lock it. All right. Get all the dough off the beer. The paddle. It's gotta be easier for me. Here are the dogs. We just put the bird feeders out for the winter. And the birds have discovered the bird feeders. And the squirrels have discovered the bird feeders. <laughs> and the dogs have discovered the squirrels. <laughs> so it's a quest every day for our dachshunds to get the squirrels. Okay. That looks great. So I'm gonna go ahead now and just scoop all this up and put it right in the bag. pretty good job. What do you think? All right. So this, I'm going to form it into a ball, shape it into a, as best I can. And then it will hunk up here. I'll put it down. I'm going to press all the air out of it that I can get out. All right. And there we go. The dough is going to go now into the refrigerator and for several hours. And I'm going to make sure that it gets very, very firm. So when that's done, I will bring you back and show you how I roll them out and cut them and bake them. Well, good morning, everybody. It's the next day. I had hoped to have rolled these out and baked them yesterday, but life just happened. So, but that's okay, because this dough is very, very forgiving and it just sat in the fridge. So what I did find though, is that it got very, very firm. So I went ahead and let it sit out for a couple hours. Because remember, there's two sticks of butter in here. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna go ahead, and even though I'm using parchment paper, I'm gonna go ahead and spray a little bit of cooking spray on the parchment paper. So I'm gonna set that aside. I went ahead and I preheated my oven to 375 degrees. So now we're gonna roll out some cookies. So I think I'm just gonna do half of this for now. It's just easier for me. I mean, you can do the whole thing if you want, but for me, it's just easier just to, just to deal with half. So I went ahead and disinfected my work area. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of flour. Flour down, okay? 
Now, if you were doing a chocolate dough, um, you know, not a white cookie, you could use cocoa powder instead of flour to keep the color the same. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and roll this out to a quarter inch. It's okay if it splits, it's, it's no problem. We're gonna go ahead and fix it. And what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, once the um, I get this down and I get all the shapes cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and combine all the scraps and put them together and make another cookie. So, so this looks to be about a quarter of an inch. So, as you saw, we're gonna do the light cookies. It look, looks like a string of lights, and that is just, I'm just using a biscuit cutter. So I'm just gonna go down, okay, and lift right up. Look how pretty that is. It's a gorgeous dough, okay? And I'm also gonna show you guys how to make a beautiful mitten. So I'm gonna do some mittens. And the lights. Let's try and get them on here. As close as you can. Another one. I give it a little wiggle. How pretty. And why this dough is so special and why I love this so much is because when we bake it, and you'll see it, they don't spread. They keep their shape. And that's what you want. It's pretty. So I'm going to put a round one in here. Oh, my oven's ready. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put this together again. Use the warmth of your hands to kind of help mold it back together in the shape of a ball. Make sure you got a little bit of flour on your rolling pin. And it's a good idea just to roll it, pick it up, and turn it a quarter, turn it 90 degrees. Oops, there it's stuck a little bit. Just flip that over. Okay, let's go ahead and do, I'm gonna go ahead and do some more lights. Beautiful. I think I might be able to get another light. Okay, there's a little flour. Just kind of brush it off. It'll be absorbed in the baking. So. Ah, oh, and there we go. How beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and bake these for 8 to 10 minutes. Um, you want them just to be a little bit golden. You don't want any kind of brown on it whatsoever. So when these are done, I will bring you back and I'll show you what they look like. And I'm going to continue to roll out the dough and make some more shapes. Okay, the timer just went off and they were in for nine minutes and look how beautiful they are. So I'm going to continue to bake these and I'm going to show you how we make our special icing. It's called royal icing. So the cookies are cooling now on the rack, so now it's time to start thinking about the icing. And today what I'm going to show you is how to make royal icing. And basically what royal icing is, is um, sugar, egg whites, or an egg white substitute, and water. And coloring if you want to go ahead and change the color. And with royal icing, there are three consistencies. There is stiff, the medium, and the thin. 
And today we're just going to be worried about the stiff and the thin. Because what I'm going to do on those cookies that you saw earlier is I'm going to outline them with the stiff and then we're going to fill the middle with the thin. And what's so great about royal icing is it hardens um, so that it stays firm and they won't get messed up at all. And they'll, they'll last for a long time, actually. So <clears throat> with the light cookies, the Christmas light cookies and with the mittens, there's basically only two colors that we need to worry about. And that is white and green. Um, I did go ahead and I bought a small tube of black for the string on the string of lights. I'll be honest with you, I cannot stand making black icing. So I would rather just buy a tube if I just need a little bit of it than to have to make black icing. It takes a lot of gel, color gel to make black and I just don't like it. So um, the black is done. So as I said, we're just gonna worry about the white and the green. So. I went ahead and filled, I have two bowls here, you guys can see that. There's one set up on my mixer and one here already. One's going to be white and one's going to be the green. Each of them has a pound of sugar, a powdered sugar in this. So basically, all we need to do for this is, whoops, is we need the one pound of sugar, we need three level tablespoons of meringue powder. And like I said, this is just egg white substitute, and it's great. You don't have to worry about egg whites going bad because yeah, these cookies can last for a long time with this icing. So I'm going to link this below. I think I got this at AC Moore when they were still in business. Um, but I'm sure we can get this on Amazon. So I'll go check out the price. If it's a good price, I will link it below. So we need three tablespoons. So it's one. Two and three. Okay. Now we also need five to six tablespoons of lukewarm water. I went ahead and just got some water in here, um, and this is going to be the stiff. So I'm going to make the stiff. I'm going to take some out, and then we're going to add more water to make the thin. And I'm going to show you how we do that. So let me get you guys over here closer so you can see inside. That looks good. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to give this a quick little whirl just to add the meringue powder and the sugar together. And I don't want to turn it on real strong so I don't want a big puff of smoke. Okay. That looks good. Now I'm going to start adding. I'm going to do the five tablespoons first and see how we look. And this just takes drops of water to change a consistency. There's one, two, three, get low there, four. five. I'm gonna let that go. Oh, can you see it working already? Okay, so I'm gonna scrape that down. We're going to take a look at it. <clears throat> Looks pretty good. I think we might need a little bit more. So I think I am going to do the sixth. So I'm going to go ahead and do the sixth in there.
scrape it. Oh, much better. See how it's starting to drip? Much better. So let me go ahead and scrape everything down. Get it off the, the whisk. Oh yeah, I am using the whisk. You see that? so everything get well incorporated. Look how pretty it is. It's shiny. Okay, I think that looks good. So here's our royal icing in white with the stiff consistency. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna go ahead and you can just use a, a Ziploc bag, whatever you have. I actually have, I have them, so I'm gonna use them, some of these plastic piping bags. So I'm gonna go ahead and put maybe, mm, see here, this is the hardest part, is trying to figure out how much you need. So we got 10 cookies over there. I'm gonna put in here, oh, let me guess here, how many? I think that might need in the stiff. Um, maybe about half because we want to outline the, the cookies with the stiff and then we also want to do the, the cuff on the, okay, so there's that. cuff on the, um, God, I lost my train of thought, on the mittens. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and get that started again. And now I'm gonna add some more liquid to make thin. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add one tablespoon and see what happens here. And basically what we're looking for is for if you drop a little bit of the icing into the rest of the icing that it takes about 10 seconds to um, you know lose its shape and go back into the the rest of the icing if that makes sense so let's take a look as it drips there's one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that's good. Okay. So that looks awesome. Okay. So you saw how easy that was. It's just, you know, one extra tablespoon of water. Alrighty. So I'm going to go ahead and I take this off. I'm gonna put this in another bag. Okay. Okay. And this is what we're gonna to do to fill the inside whoops, of the interior cookie. You know what, let me get a cup. I can just pour it on in since it is a little thin. Whoops, as I'm making a mess. Great. 
Okay. Now what's so wonderful about royal icing is actually if you put it in an airtight container, it lasts for weeks. I mean, basically it's just, you know, sugar and water. Okay, so that's that one. So here's our bin. And I'm just gonna leave this in the cup here. Just to remind me which one's the stiff and which one's the thin. Okay, so there's the white. Now we're gonna do the green. Same exact thing. Beater. It's okay, you don't have to change the beater because we're just doing the same exact thing. Okay. So in here it goes three tablespoons of meringue powder. I hope I have enough. One. Yeah, I think I do. Two. Whoops. Three. And go ahead and give that a little whirl. Okay, I'm gonna do five tablespoons of water. It's warm water to help. That's one. Two, three, four, and five. Let's start with five, see how we do. So while that's going and mixing up, I want to talk about coloring. Um, you can use, um, you know, a green food coloring. Um, just be very, very careful because remember this is you're adding liquid again to this. So I don't want to, I'm only going to do five so far for this, for tablespoons of water because we might be adding liquid to this. Or what bakers use is they actually use icing colors that are gels. So be careful with this because it stains <laughs> unbelievably. I still have some stains of this on my counters around here somewhere. So anyway, I'm going to start with this, see how we do, and see if we might need to add some more of the green, because I don't have a whole lot of the gel. So I'm going to go ahead and stop. Go ahead and give it a good scrape down. Sure everything's incorporated. This actually looks better than the, than the white dispatch. I'm worried that my stiff might be a little bit too runny because I went ahead and added that sixth tablespoon, but I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna get all this down in here. Okay, so this is a Kelly Green. So you see, it's like a gel in there, and I can see it's really dark. So I'm going to go ahead and get a small fork. Go ahead and take some out. That's maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a tablespoon, or a quarter of a teaspoon. So I'm going to add that in. I'm going to see what we end up with. I say this stuff will color everything. All right, let's get going here and see what happens. And these colors too, they darken as they sit. As they dry, they get darker. So that's pretty green.
to see that in there. Looking good. Looking really good. It's hard, but I'm doing this backwards. <laughs> so I'm gonna scrape this down. Right, this is looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead, lift up a little bit. That's my trick to try and get the beaters clean. Okay, so this looks great. What a pretty Christmassy green color. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. Sir, it's like this looks great. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a take a little bit of this and put it into a bag because this is going to be the stiff that's going to um, outline the mittens, and then we're going to add some more water to thin it out to make for the flooding interior of the mittens. So excited about this. It's been a while since I've made sugar cookies with oops, royal icing. If you're a Facebook friend of mine, um, you know, personal friend, you will see on my um, cover photo the original ones that I made about seven years ago, the Christmas trees. This is basically this. The little white lights, and I used um, mini M&Ms for the Christmas ornament balls. So, a little bit more. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I think this consistency is gonna is better than the white. The stiff. You see how that is? Okay. So I'm gonna set this aside. Get this back on. Bring y'all back around. And now we're gonna make the thin. So I'm gonna add one tablespoon of water to this and see what see how we end up with. Incorporated. I'm not seeing any green dye that hasn't been mixed in, so that's good. I just want to make sure that. Um, the consistency is right. Right. Okay. So 
Let's try it again. Let's do the count, the 10 count. When it, when it plops down, it takes 10 seconds to you go back in. So there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That looks good. That's really good. I think the green actually turned out better than the white. So go figure. But we're going to make it work. So. So I got my green, got the white. I'm gonna go check on the cookies and see if they're completely cool. You don't want them warm at all because this is this will just melt if you try to put this on a warm cookie now. It will make a huge mess. So I'm gonna get all set up and bring you back when we're ready. So the cookies have completely cooled. Now it's time to have some fun. So I'm going to do one of each for you. Along with the icings that we've already made, I have some mini M&Ms for the lights for the light cookies. And I have some green sanding sugar for the uh, mittens. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with the, let's go ahead and start with the mitten. So I have the stiff consistency um, green icing and what I'm going to go ahead and do I'm gonna go ahead and just do the part of the mitten without the cuff so I'm gonna go ahead and just do an outline 45 degree angle even pressure like I said you don't need to have these bags you can just have the uh, ziplock bag works perfectly fine oops that's okay we're gonna hide that little boo-boo there no problem This takes some practice. Okay, you want to release it, connect it. Okay, there you go. Now I'm going to take the, the thin consistency and we're going to fill in. Now it is going to all come together, so you don't have to be absolutely perfect here. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to put this back in the glass. That works out great. Okay, so no worries what it looks like now because it's all going to come together. So I'm going to take a toothpick, and I'm going to go ahead, and just any of the spots where it just needs a little bit of attention, I'm just going to go ahead and just run it around, kind of help guide it. See how it's all getting smooth already? See how it covered up that boo-boo that I made? Okay. That looks great. So now, what I'm going to do is take some of that sanding sugar. I'm going to move the other cookie out of the way. Since we don't, I'm just gonna, while it's wet, I'm going to go ahead and do a generous coating of the sanding sugar. Right. Gonna let it sit here for a second. I'm going to go ahead and tilt it. Give it a good tap. Tap the bottom as well. Brush any off, maybe the cuff a little bit here. Okay. That looks great. I'm going to set him to the side. That's why I used wax paper. Go ahead and pour the rest of the sanding, sanding sugar back into the bowl. So we use it for the next cookie. Okay. And now we have the stiff consistency of the white. And I'm just going to go ahead and go around. And we're going to do a little cuff. Reach up. You don't want to see a space between the cuff and the, the mitten. You could use the thin here too if you wanted to. Yeah, this this stiff is probably a little bit too much. It has too much liquid in it. It should be stiffer than this, but we're gonna make it work. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the other side of the toothpick, not the green one. I'm gonna do the same thing. Just fill in a little bit. 
anything that doesn't look perfect just to help guide it along. And there you go. It's going to sit for a little bit. You can see the icing starting to blend down in. Just give it a couple of minutes and it'll completely good and be all smooth. And that's what's so great about royal icing. You do want to make sure when you're using it that you have it covered because it will harden very, very quickly. And there you go. Look at that. A beautiful mitten cookie. Sugar cookie. Okay, let me put this off to the on the rack to let it cool and dry. I should say let it dry. And I'm going to show you now how to do the little light. So here's the cookie. Same thing. You want the stiff consistency icing. You do a circle around. Don't worry if it's a little bumpy. We can fix that. It's been a long time since I've done any kind of piping. So my hand's not as steady as it used to be. And then we use the thin to fill in. Make it a fresh toothpick. It's gonna help push it around a little bit. Years ago, before I had children, um, it's probably 20 years ago, I um, went to AC Moore and in the town that was next to it, the little town where we where we were living at the time, and they offered Wilton. Um, cake decorating classes and it was so much fun it was like $25 total it was four lessons it was on Saturday mornings and I got to learn all these different techniques and learn about the icings and whatnot um, I wish they still did those they don't I mean I thought it was brilliant on their part because then you go to have to go to AC Moore and buy all the tools and everything but AC Moore is no longer around I don't know if Hobby Lobby or Michaels or does any of those so anyway, so there we have our, our icing. You can spend more time on this if you want to and get it more circular. My guys are just gonna woof these down. They're not gonna, gonna care. <laughs> so, so here's that black icing that I told you about. I just put it in one of those bags again. Like I said, if you don't have these bags, just use a Ziploc bag, works perfectly. I have these, so I wanna use them up. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna make like a, just a, you know, no rhyme or reason to it, like a strand of lights. Okay, put it together. Okay. And now I'm going to take some, some of my M&Ms, and I'm going to put them in sideways so they have to kind of have the shape of the light. So there's an orange one, and a blue, and a green. Back to orange now. I don't think we want brown. And a blue. And a green. And a yellow. And a red. Oh, I'm so happy that they all worked out. One of each. How cute. So there you go. I think these would be perfect to make these and if you have a family night, especially this year with COVID, if you're going to drive around and look at um, Christmas lights, what a cute cookie to have in the car, as well as um, everyone have a thermos of hot chocolate and decaf coffee for the adults, and what a great evening to spend. So I'm going to continue to work on these. The different options of making cookies like this is endless. So now you guys know how to do a, a royal icing cookie and... Hope you enjoyed this. Hey, you guys, take good care.